The IRS is floating a new program to better track tips in the service industry. Under the Service Industry Tip Compliance Agreement, restaurants, bars, food delivery, and other establishments where workers earn money from tips would voluntarily participate. The new program would facilitate the agency's monitoring and taxing efforts of the service industry, which currently requires workers to simply declare what they earn. Right now, most relying on gratuity for an income make woefully less than minimum wage, a point Republican Congressman Thomas Massey poked at in a tweet, saying, quote, how many waiters and waitresses are making more than $400,000 per year, Mr. President, a reference to Joe Biden's commitment not to raise taxes for anybody uh, earning over that amount of money, implication being that this IRS change in policy will, in fact, amount to a constructive tax on these lower wage workers. Yeah, I don't think anyone wants to see, not, not my libertarian self, not your left progressive self wants to see uh, the IRS focus more of its attention on tipped workers or anyone of that sort. Um, that had a very sinister sound, uh, tipping compliance authority yeah. type deal. I mean, this is, this is ex exactly the complaint that, uh, that I have raised and a lot of other people on the show that you know, give, the, give the IRS more resources and they're gonna target um, waiters and waitresses and Uber drivers and people of that nature. Uh, pe people whose, in whose income sources are uh, complicated from a taxing standpoint, and, which is frustrating for them. You know, these people making not a lot of money, not anywhere near the kinds of, you know, we talk about the people you wanna tax, go after people uh, who have a lot of money and are finding creative ways to you know, hot, protect their income from taxation. People who have very, who work multiple part-time jobs, have, have, are part of the gig economy, have these complicated income structures, and the, for the IRS to spend more time on them, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's horrible. Yes, yeah, certainly. I'm not sure that this is a resource issue. I don't know if implementing mm -hmm. this policy is a consequence of the IRS having more resources. What we've seen historically is that when the IRS were, was funded at the levels that the Democrats wanted to now be funded at going forward 10 years ago, they actually had the resources to go after more um, out wealthier people, that going after folks who have teams of attorneys to hide their tax filings, you know, their, tax, uh, their income and wealth all over the world, et cetera, actually requires a different kind of staffer, an investigator, to go after those kinds of um, individuals. And that, frankly, without resources, they go for low-hanging fruit. They pick on poor people. Um, the most tax uh, audited, rather, city in America is this city in, in Mass, in, uh, sorry, in Mississippi, where something like 50% of the population lives in poverty. And that's because it's easy to send out one of these like inquiry letters that basically do this really superficial audit when they're poor uh, and they're easily coerced and beaten. And this feels, this has the smell of that to me. This is low hanging fruit. Oh, people are using Venmo. People are getting around the tax system. Just make them report their Venmo earnings. I, I think that regardless of what is causing this policy, there should be public pushback against it. And I also think it should uh, incite a conversation about whether or not we should still have this kind of two-tiered system where waiters and waitresses, you know, wait staff are basically excluded from minimum wage requirements because of this tipped pay scale. The origins of a tipped pay scale, like it or not, historically is rooted in so many of these tipped workers being mm. black folks um, who were historically disadvantaged and cut out of the wage market. They were cut out of the minimum wage provisions purposefully um, so that they wouldn't have to be paid um, these basic minimum wage requirements. And now there's this kind of ridiculous legacy that ends up having like this two-tiered system. So do we want to move to a system where there's, you, you can no longer pay someone $2.50 an hour because they are Do you have the sense waiter. that workers prefer the tipped system? No, I mean, the, yes and no, it depends. There's some do and some don't, it, it right? Depends, I, it depends, right? So for example, there was a movement in um, a ballot initiative, I believe, maybe in 2018-ish here in DC, um, to defeated. get rid of a, a tipped wage. And the reality is a lot of business interests align against it. Yeah. Because they don't, you know, they would rather not have to be responsible to pay their own workers out of their own pockets to get the, the cost get passed on to consumers. Of course, everywhere else in the world, if, if you've left the country, if you've traveled, you know that nobody does it like we do. They just pay their employees wages. And you as a consumer don't have to be worried about that aspect of providing additional service fees when you go to a restaurant. And most of the world seems to be happy with that sort of arrangement. It's very embedded in our culture, tipping. I think I'm always uncomfortable when I travel overseas and I don't have that obligation to leave a tip, and you're like, okay, I guess I'll leave just a little bit something anyway. But I think, generally speaking, we should be moving to a system where people just get paid 
mm-hmm. fair wages. I mean, to your point, I remember that ballot initiative. It was, it failed in D.C. Um, and you, and you got to look at who was for it and who was against it if you want to have a sense of whose interest it served. And it was business interests, the you know, mm-hmm. who were aligned against it, not um, staffers, for the most yeah. part. Well, prob- probably all star staffers who get tipped a lot or sure they, yeah. sure do you remember that uh restaurant and oh we're not you're not a new yorker there's a there's a restaurant in um in a union square that was famously staffed all by models aspiring like theater people and models in new york city and you can imagine a world <laughs> where if you if you are uh someone who attracts tips <laughs> you know if you're yeah. someone who who, who uh, enthralls customers do, do like people those people really do, do people tip drastically differently depending on the service they get still anymore like i feel like i just tip to the same thing but regardless yeah. um i yeah i mean that's how i feel but i don't yeah. think that's how other people feel and you see this also. People I, I, really think about it whether to do 15 percent or 20 percent or something yeah or? and a lot of restaurants have mandatory Fee, mm-hmm. tip, tip if you have a certain number in, of party. Or not even. Yeah. I, I went to a place, just two of us, um, last weekend, and it was clearly the kind of place that is frequented by perhaps younger kids, college kids, maybe people who don't tip as mm-hmm. much, because we both observed, you know, my dining companion and I observed that there was a built-in tip on the bill, which we thought was mm-hmm. it, kind of weird. I mean, it's not that we right. minded, but it was weird, partly because also we wouldn't have noticed perhaps if, you know, we hadn't checked and then we would have double tipped. But yeah, I think that a lot of places are moving in that direction either because there are a lot of people who are skipping out and not tipping. And that really hurts the, the staff, right? Because they are reliant on a substantial part of their wages coming from tips. So with, without having to finagle all of that, instead of having to kind of like build it into the menu, instead of having to like force tips, just pay people the wages that they have earned. And everybody can have settled expectations going into a dining experience. Yeah, I don't have strong feelings about it one way or the other. But uh, well, taxpayers look forward to uh, looking forward to cashing in their refund check may have to wait a little longer. This week, the IRS urged the public to hold off filing the 2022 taxes. Certain states implemented a special refund as part of relief efforts, which the IRS says makes the process of filing more complex as each state operates under different rules. The agency said in a statement that they hope to have, quote, additional clarity for as many states and taxpayers as possible next week. It's just the word. The more confusing they make it, the more people are going to inadvertently not pay the right thing. And they know what you owe. They could just tell you. It just gets more confusing between state and local. And, and you know, people have multiple sources of income, and you have to report on all of those. And uh, it's, it's, it's Yeah, there's been great people. reporting. I'm looking at a ProPublica study from 2019, or article right now from 2019, that details TurboTax's 20-year fight to stop Americans from filing their taxes Ugh. for free. There's incredible lobbying efforts Horrible. to protect the ability of these kind of companies to prepare your taxes for you, to keep it complicated so you can't do it yourself, so that it's onerous, so that your tax refunds, which a lot of people rely on, on substantively for their f- fiscal planning for the year to be delayed. It's a mess. And nobody is looking out for, for these kinds of um, fees that uh, accrue disproportionately to the class people. It's the worst sort of people. croniest uh, government capture of, of, a, of a sector of the economy. It's yeah. terrible. I will say, I gave, I gave Biden some credit in his speech yesterday for focusing on these kind of consumer issues. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't mention tax filings. But if he wanted to keep on this populist thread, that got him a lot of plaudits yesterday. If he wants to go in that direction, he would uh, he would have some libertarian support. I didn't like some of his ideas along these lines, but that absolutely cut out the uh, TurboTax middleman. H&R Block. Just totally yeah. useless. <laughs> Biden's going to put H&R Block on the block. <laughs> on the chopping block. <laughs> on the block. chopping block. Chop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you, heard it, you heard it from us first, Biden. Free advice. We'll have more ri- rising for you right after this.